Hi, welcome. Here is our first essay dealing with chapter one essay, Why Do We Create Monsters? Now, before I begin, I just want to explain that all the essays we do in class will basically follow this same format that you see here. Okay. So it says, write an essay in which you respond to one of the following questions taken from Monsters Chapter 1. Now, obviously, you have to have the book, and it has to be the second edition because, obviously, other editions are different. The first edition is not the same as the second. Now, what you see here are the names of the authors, okay, King, Hitchcock, Del Toro, and Hogan, Klostman, Brothers, Lowry, and Asthma. And you see the specific question numbers. These questions are to be found after the article okay I want you to choose one of these now I do want to remind everybody because this happens occasionally these are different from the questions that you may see in the discussion thread assignments discussion threads are different questions these are the essay questions okay now I'll walk us through these questions or these essays in just a bit but I do have and I hope you've watched the opening video for chapter one I made a 15 minute video for chapter one. Please watch that first because it does help set the tone uh, for what's happening in this chapter. Why do we create monsters? That is to say, human beings quite honestly have created the monster concept, right? We didn't necessarily just have it thrust upon us. Now the final draft of the essay, when is this whole thing due? It's Monday, November the 1st. That's not much time, right? Well, you're signed up for an eight week class, that's what we get. We get working and we gotta work quickly. Be sure to follow, no, okay, and you have all of Monday, because it's 11.59 p.m., all the way to the last minute on Monday to turn it in. Be sure to follow the out of class essay guidelines for matters of format and style. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Please go back to Canvas, look under Canvas in the modules. You will see a handout with the out of class essay guidelines. And there's also a video that walks you through that sheet. Okay, it's a two sided sheet of paper, but it's one sheet. Um, and it walks you through. Be sure to include a word count at the end of your essay. Now, word counts are very easy to come by these days, you know, as you're working on your paper. On your computer, you should have somewhere on the screen or easily accessed that will indicate how many words you have. Remember, you must meet minimum requirements, including word count sources and subject matter. Now, the subject matter are these questions. The word count is down below, and the source count is also down below. No late essays will be accepted without a signed doctor's note or other verified excuse. Let me just explain right away. When I say a verifiable excuse, it has to be something legit. I do not want to hear about family vacations. Okay, that's not legit. Work schedule problems. Sorry, that's not legit. Computer problems. Again, sorry, not legit. Okay, you're either got a doctor's problem that you can show me a note for, or you were arrested and thrown in the hooskow or something like that. Right? You had to show up in court. I don't know, but something pretty legit, okay? Otherwise, don't say, well, I was kind of sick, I didn't feel good, or my computer was acting up, I couldn't get it to work right. That kind of stuff is not gonna fly. Now, submit a thesis statement and topic outline to Canvas by Friday. That is this Friday, that is three days from now, okay? By the end of the day, you have all Friday up to 11.59. There is an example, Okay, I have a sample topic outline in the chapter one module, so please take a look at it, okay? Please have MLA citations for one source. The source may be from our textbook. Okay, you may use that. Now, I also have examples to help you out of how to do this. Again, look in the modules. Now, after the... Uh, Outline is turned in. I will look at it. I will grade it. I'll give you my comments and you will be turning around and working right away on a rough draft. The rough draft we will put, you will be submitting twice and I will give you instructions on Canvas in the announcement section on how we're going to do this. But I put the class into groups. Usually you have three or four students in each group, sometimes five if it, the numbers don't work out right, but usually four. 
Okay, those are peer groups. You're going to submit your rough draft to me as well as to your Canvas peer group, the work group that you have. Okay, so this would be like what we might do in a classroom where we would workshop together physically in the same room, but we can't do that right now with COVID, so we do it in an online environment. So you're going to turn in the rough draft two times. You're going to turn it into me the regular way, and you're going to turn it into your Canvas work group. As I said, there will be instructions in, the announce, in an announcement that I will send out next week uh, on Canvas. That is due Wednesday. I should say 11.59 p.m., but basically end of day Wednesday, okay? Then what you're going to do is you're going to read your other peers, the other members of your work group. They're going to read your rough draft. You're going to read their rough draft. You're going to fill out these peer editing sheets, and you're going to pass them back to them in your group by Friday, October 29th, 11.59 p.m. And, of course, I need to get them. So both the rough draft is, is submitted twice, and the peer edits are submitted twice. Okay? And then between Friday and the next Monday is when the final draft is due, Monday, November the 1st. Now let's take a look at the minimum requirements. Always important to make sure you meet the minimums. You must have at least a thousand words. And then you see this little squiggly line here? That means about 1400 words. I'm much more flexible on the upper limit. If you wanna go a little longer, that's fine as long as you're not driving me nuts, okay? If I'm bored, then it's not good, right? Then you need to cut. Some papers are better longer because people have a lot of really wonderful things to say. Some papers, honestly, are better shorter if you haven't got as much to say. Strong essay structure, including introduction, concession, rebuttal arguments, main body, and conclusion. Now, if this is all new to you, you don't know what I'm talking about, go back into the modules. I have a handout and a video that talks about the standard argumentative essay. You need to read that handout. You need to watch that video because that's where I tell you what to do in terms of structuring an essay. And it may be different than what your wonderful high school teacher told you to do because gosh knows I have no idea what your high school teacher taught you. But I know what I want and it's in that video and on that handout, okay? Now, you need to have at least two sources in the final draft, two different sources, okay? Now, I do allow one of those sources to be an article from our textbook. So, for example, if you're writing on Stephen King, which is the first essay in our book, then you want to quote Stephen King. That's wonderful. But you're going to need at least one other source beyond Stephen King. Now, we have a library here at Mesa College called the Learning Resource Center. It's actually open. I mean, it is physically open. You can go there physically and check things out, or you can do it online still. We have a lot of important databases, okay, including most importantly EBSCOhost and JSTOR to use to do your research. We also have ebooks as well as old fashioned regular books, okay. If you're not familiar with our library at Mesa, don't worry. I do also have a handout. Actually, I'm sorry, it's not a handout. It's a three-part video called The Triangle of Research. Okay? And The Triangle of Research, I want you to watch part one. talks about how to get books out of our library. Part two talks about how to get periodicals out of our library. Periodicals means magazine articles, newspaper articles, and most importantly, journal articles. Part three is about intelligent use of the internet. Okay, because you may have heard not everything on the internet is true. So you need at least two sources, but remember you can always do more than the minimum. So you find three, four, five, six sources. If it helps your paper, great. That's what I want. Lastly, MLA format in presentation and documentation, including correct work cited list. Use the handouts on Canvas if you need help. Again, the handouts are there. I have videos to talk about what's on the handout, and I have some web links that take you to Purdue OWL. There are even some videos that give you some really simple, basic, down and dirty information about MLA. Now, 
just quickly, let's just walk through these articles. Uh, the video that I've created for Chapter 1 Introduction, if you haven't watched it yet, please do so. And it talks more in depth about all of these articles. But they all have to do with this question, of where do the monsters really come from? So Stephen King, the famous horror writer, uh, starts us off with just talking about the nature of why we like to be scared. Hitchcock is talking about the creation of actually two great stories. She's most particularly talking about Mary Shelley and the creation of Frankenstein. But also, it includes a guy named John Polidori, who wrote a famous, well, actually not so famous, a story called The Vampire, which got, shall we say, confiscated intellectually and turned into Dracula by Bram Stoker about 80 years later. But Paul Adori came up with the first bloodsucker who was also a physically attractive, charming, and seductive person, as opposed to just a straightforward monster. Del Toro and Hogan. You may have heard of Guillermo del Toro, right? Famous film director. They're talking here more about the vampire mythology, and they also allude to John Polidori, by the way. Klossman takes on zombies. Zombies are, of course, a very popular monster here in the 21st century and also going back into the 20th century. Brothers introduces us to Godzilla. All right, a Godzilla who is a creature that came quite directly out of the experience of the atomic bombs being dropped on Japan at the end of World War II. And he talks a lot about the making of the movie Godzilla and its reflection of the anxieties and traumas experienced by the Japanese people of that time. Clarice Lowry writes about a much newer monster, Slender Man, a creation of the internet. Right? I don't know, there was a movie made about it, but you may not know that it actually originated on the internet. It, like Frankenstein and the vampire of Polidori, was actually a response to a contest. Very interesting. And lastly is asthma. Asthma is talking about monsters in general and our, what, we, what he calls the moral imagination, our determination of right and wrong. Okay, so my advice to you, read all the essays in the chapter. First, look at these questions, consider which ones you find most exciting and interesting, because that's going to be the one that you'll work the hardest on and very likely do the best job on. Happy reading.